hurt in our eating. It's not necessarily a problem unless it becomes disorder. Uh, it becomes an eating disorder, and there is a difference. So if you find a method of eating that works for you, fine. If it's getting into, if it's interfering and getting in the way of your life, then it's something to look at. So there's a balance that way too, and I'll discuss it when I talk about the my plate and what a healthy balanced diet is, and then I'll debunk some of the diet myths out there so that you can bring them home and tell her she'll maybe give her input because I don't know how you eat because you don't eat when we're out so I don't I know do. well they can't find anything to eat when we're out okay oh, I didn't <laughs> even know that you were a vegetarian I'm a pescatarian pescatarian okay I, I am too but I'm a flexitarian which means <laughs> if someone's I'm flexidox it's a Jewish <laughs> There's also a variety of terms for being somewhat religious, and then you, so it's flexidox. Oh, flexidox. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. So if there's a burger cooking or chicken and it smells good, I'm going to probably have some. I may not eat a whole bit. I might have a half and then have some grilled chicken with it so that I'm not overdoing it to the point that I just feel sick or uncomfortable. Um, then that's and not a pescatarian. With it. I'm a flexitarian. flexitarian. I don't do it often, but if I... I'm Add going another to thing. I smell, smell a good steak I'm eating. I yeah. don't eat a lot of it, but I will because I'm flexible. Okay, this is the my plate method of eating. This was you have wow. And the in schools when I taught, oh, wow, I taught I nutrition. So for do you remember the eating right pyramid? Yeah. Uh huh. This is this is what replaced the eating mm -hmm. right pyramid. Um, eight years ago, mm -hmm. and people are like, no, I've never seen it. I'm like, oh my gosh, we're not doing a good job here. It's a nine inch plate. Does your plate have to be nine inches? No, it's just a reminder that that's actually how we probably used to eat back in the 60s, 50s, whenever. Now all of a sudden we have these big, more beautiful plates and the restaurants think, oh, if I give a really big portion, they're gonna come back. It's all about coming back. Let's make the food taste so good. They can't resist, they have to come back. So this is a nine inch plate. Half of this plate, you cut it in half, is filled with high fiber watery vegetables. Broccoli, Brussels sprouts, asparagus, carrots, even though they're sweet, it's carrots, cauliflower, tomatoes, cucumbers, peppers, onions, mushrooms, um, cucumbers, what am I leaving out? Artichokes, the high fiber watery one, all kinds of lettuce, spinach, those foods are so high in fiber and water and so low in calories that we, as dietitians, call them free food. You can eat as much as you want. It's not going to affect your blood sugar. It's not going to cause Depending on how you prepare them. Right. Well, well, I'm not talking about the added fat. I'm talking about the vegetables, whether it's um, cooked or raw, oh, okay. okay, or juiced it's not going to have a great effect on your blood sugar. In fact, because they're filled with fiber, this is the book, they're going to slow down how fast that sugar goes into your bloodstream. So that and they're filled with vitamins, minerals, macronutrients, not macronutrients, I'm sorry, vitamins, minerals, fiber, uh, phytochemicals, antioxidants, and all this good stuff that's going to make you a healthier person. It's also going to create a healthier gut. So we hear all this gut microbiome, test your bio, see what, what's in there. We don't know enough about it right now to do anything with that information. So save your money, don't test your microbiome yet. We just don't know enough about it. But I can tell you that if your doctor says you need a probiotic, okay, fine listen to your doctor I recommend you do but if you think oh I'm gonna take a probiotic I'm gonna be healthier you probably don't need it and if you do you're now bringing a manufactured three different bacteria into your gut every day and if you do that for more than three months at a time you're now creating a less healthy gut because you're bringing that same bacteria in. we want you to bring in a rainbow, you knew it had to come up, right? Dietitian, eat a rainbow of colors 
we want you to bring in as many different phytochemicals into your body to create better health. The fiber in the high fiber vegetables and fruit, we'll talk about that too, cannot be broken down. Fiber can't break down. Your body tries to break it down, it ferments, and that fermentation is the food that feeds your gut and the bacteria. That's what creates a healthy gut microbiome, is a variety of different colors from the rainbow of fruits and vegetables. So people will say to me, I eat blueberries every morning with my oatmeal and my walnuts. I do that because I heard they're the powerhouse. I'm like, yeah, they are a powerhouse, that's awesome. But so are all the other fruits on the rainbow, including bananas. We said that was, yeah, yeah, including bananas, everything. So maybe if they're on sale one day, buy the blueberries. If raspberries are on sale, buy the raspberries, buy the bananas, mix it up. Bring in a lot of different colors and phytochemicals into your gut to make a healthier gut microbiome. So the new research is that when you have a healthy gut, you're happier or better mood. I think it's because you're eating better that you're happier and better mood. When you eat better food, you feel good. It's like uh, L on, um, on Legally Blonde. Yes. She couldn't have killed him. She exercises, right? <laughs> She's not a murderer. She, eats, she exercises. Well, when you eat healthy food, you feel better. And so I think that that's why our guts are healthier and maybe not the other way around, but I don't know. Lots of work to be done there. Um, so, half your plate food, uh, not food, vegetables. Let's is it true the bananas get different qualities as they ripen? Yeah, they get more sugar. Uh -huh, but that's so it's best, problem. but is it eat best it to eat it? Like it. But well, is it best it. to eat it at the beginning stage? I think it's better to eat it when you, the way you like it. And if you are concerned, maybe have a little bit of peanut butter with it or some walnuts or have it on a peanut butter sandwich with whole grain bread. Or if you are concerned, then eat it green. And it doesn't matter. It's up to you. It's But does it pay to make banana bread when it goes rotten? Oh. So <laughs> if you're just eating shuck one em. slice of, <laughs> of banana bread and you're adding the walnuts and you're adding some fat in there, that's going to help slow it down and okay. you have a little. If you eat the whole loaf, yeah, let's talk no, about it. No, we don't do that. That's disordered eating. No, yeah. but that's interesting how the yeah. banana can morph. To. Now, I'm going to get to one part that remind me that I have to explain about eating the whole loaf. If I forget, I'm going to have oh, no, I said she I know. couldn't eat it. Right, right but i got to remember. Oh. I have something I want to okay. bring up about yeah. that. Okay, Maybe example. That's yours to remember. You're making your scrambled eggs in the morning. Have spinach in your fridge. Grab a handful of spinach. Boom, you added vegetables. That helps you reach half your plate. If you go out to eat and you're having an omelet, you can get peppers, onions, mushrooms, tomato thrown in your omelet. You can even do double. You go out for lunch, you're having a sandwich, kind of a double tomato, double lettuce, and double onion, and a salad, a side salad with it. Um, going out for dinner, when I go for Asian food, I don't know if I've ever eaten out for Asian food with any of you, but I will order a side, when, at least when I'm with my family, a side of vegetables steamed and I put those on my plate with the rice and I do either brown or white, depending on my mood. And then I take whatever it was I felt like having and I'll put that on top. So now my vegetables get all the flavor of my- Dish. <laughs> of the dish. But I'm taking in probably half of the sugar, salt, and fat that I would be eating. Um, Whole Foods, I'm be a little, by, well, any of them. They have their food counter. They have a great deal. It's probably one of the best deals in San Diego. Whole Foods? What? $12. Yeah, $12.99 12 for a plate, and you get a choice of protein and two sides. So I get it salmon for $12 at Whole Foods. I get a big piece of salmon, and when I go late, they sometimes give me two. Okay, <laughs> so I get two meals. So salmon, I do the veggies, and I do like quinoa or a grain or a potato or something. But I know that. Even Whole Foods is still marketing and wants me to come back. So they're adding in a lot of sugar, salt, and fat to the food so it tastes good. So I bring it home 
after work, I'll pick it up and I'll open up a container of organic brown rice, 90 second microwave, mix it in with the quinoa, or if I have quinoa in my fridge, plain, mix it in. I just cut the sugar, salt, and fat in half. So if anyone has elevated blood pressure, you need to watch your salt. It's a good way to do it that way. If I'm bringing it to someone's house, I'm doing that, and then I'm adding in tons of chopped vegetables. Sometimes I buy them already chopped, throw it all in, and now I have a huge serving, and it's so much healthier, and I really only bought one serving of their original food out, and everyone's like, oh, it tastes so great. Yeah, because I cut all the extra stuff out. So anyway, I'll bring it home. I have two meals now. I have brown rice mixed with quinoa, cut it in half, and now I know what's in there. I take the vegetables, I add in either my frozen vegetables, yep, I eat frozen vegetables, my freezer is stocked with them, or a bag vegetable and I steam it, or if you're, you know, have the time, chop your vegetables. And I mix it all together, and then I have a meal where I have a lot of vegetables, I'm not as worried about all the extra sugar, salt, and fat. Okay, that's vegetables. Quarter of your plate is the starch. This is rice and beans. It's supposed to represent what most people eat. Um, quarter of your plate. That's your carbs. Those are your carbohydrates. So once in a while, yeah, fried, okay, but we're gonna say stay away from fried foods as much as you can. Choose more natural from the earth, baked royal steam type of things and eat those. On the side here is another carb and another carb. A whole fruit versus the juice because the fruit has pectin, fiber, and pulp, and that's gonna slow down how fast the sugar goes into your bloodstream. Also, if I juice an, a glass of orange juice, it's three or four or five oranges to make one glass. If I ate three, four or five oranges with my meal, I probably would be so full I wouldn't eat as much. So it's a whole fruit and dairy or non-dairy, but it's low or non-fat because we do know that saturated fat is not good for you and causes inflammation. And it's usually that is co combined with all the processed foods. So when the doctors that are um, speaking up and saying, don't eat dairy, it's evil, it's not evil it's the saturated fat in the dairy so it's the ice ice cream it's the cheese it's not non-fat and low-fat milk products or yogurt those are good especially calcium for our bones which i'll throw that in there so dairy is not the problem it's the high saturated fat dairy products and the other ultra processed food like the twinkies that are causing inflammation and ill health and they just they don't, they're already broken down. You just, they go right into your bloodstream. You don't feel full fast enough. You can eat a ton of them and they're gonna raise your blood glucose up. But when you eat more natural food from the earth, you'll be able to um, uh, eat them um, and with a slower rise in your blood glucose. And then calorie-less beverage on the side, water, tea, coffee. So this is a healthy balanced diet. It can be looked at however you want. Again, if you're not in the mood for fruit and yogurt with your lunch, you don't have to. It means one, two, three servings of carbohydrates. So when it comes to diabetes care, we'll say a serving of rice is a third of a cup. So if you have a cup of rice, that's three servings and that's okay. For someone with diabetes, we usually say three to five servings and if you're a big Tall, muscular person we're even saying way more than that four five six seven your body knows what to do per meal per meal three meals a day that's the carbs we're supposed to eat so if you're having breakfast with two slices of 100% whole grain bread not wonder wheat or wheat bread which is white bread that hasn't been dyed white yet but 100% whole grain. So two slices, that's two servings. You have some yogurt and some berries. You just got four carbs in breakfast. Have it with an egg, some spinach, and you've got yourself my plate. Um, coffee, there you go. So next, lean protein, did I say that? 
I do this all the time, so I never know. I always forget. No, yeah, you didn't talk protein. Lean protein, a quarter of your plate. Choosing lean protein more often. If I go out and I'm craving ribs or there's ribs, I'll have a rib, but I'm not gonna eat a whole rack of ribs myself. If everyone's like, oh, ribs, I'll say, hey, let's get a half a rack for the table and split it, we'll all get one. And then I get grilled chicken or shrimp or something that's leaner and healthier. That's flexitarian, that's being flexible with your, your meal. That's what I'm talking about, as opposed to all or nothing. We all think that if we eat really, really clean, we're gonna be healthier. And it's not necessarily healthier, especially mentally. A little bit of ultra processed food or dessert just kind of brings a little bit of joy. And you know what, in this day and age, we need as much joy as we can get. So having a little bit of that is not gonna harm or hurt you or make you ill health. A lot of it maybe will cause weight gain and ill health. Fat gets stored. We have an unlimited capacity to store it. You can keep gaining weight. There's no turn off. Complex carbs used for energy. You burn them. It's fueling your body. It's harder to gain weight from healthy, complex carbohydrates like vegetables, starchy vegetables, beans, legumes, fruit, all of those foods. Have them with a little bit of protein have them with a little bit of fat and your body's gonna start to work really, really, really efficiently. Um, okay, so just remember, I'm gonna explain this whole thing. This is my typical client. I can't understand why I've gained weight or my sugar's high. I, I've been eating so healthy and I exercise all the time and I don't understand it. I say, well, what do you eat? Well, I eat just a yogurt for breakfast. It ties mm. me over to lunch or I eat um, a power bar or a, a protein bar or, or smoothie. It ties me over to lunch and then for lunch I just do a salad and a piece of protein and it ties me over to dinner and then for dinner I eat, it looks like a pie plate. And I say, great. And they go, oh, but I'm addicted to sugar. Mm. In the evening all hell breaks this <laughs> and I can't stop. And I go and I start eating potato chips and ice cream and chocolate or cookies. I can't stop. And I say, you're not addicted to sugar. If you're addicted to sugar, you would pass by a sugar bowl and you'd be eating it, right? You don't do that. You're not addicted to sugar. What is most likely happening is that we live in a world that tells us, look like Twiggy, you know, we all remember Twiggy, right? Be thin, be fit, look good. So we think, okay, I gotta eat less. If I eat less, I'll lose weight, but your body needs to be fueled and if you eat enough calories spread out throughout the day you're not going to be binging at night you just are not going to crave all that sugar that is your body saying hey you haven't given me enough carbs and i need fuel i need energy give me carbs and it starts saying potato chips cookies ice cream it doesn't say have some beans and rice, have some, a half a sandwich. You know, it says sweets. It's not an addiction to sugar. It's your body actually saying, hey, this is what you need. Who knew? So what can you do? You can calculate out, we can do this, how many calories you need to be at your goal weight. And instead of subtracting 500 calories that every diet out there tells you to do, and then you're like, I'm so deprived, I'm so hungry, but I'm losing weight. Instead, you could be like, wow, I'm eating enough calories. This is great. I'm not going to eat that ice cream. Well, maybe I'll take one bite because it looks good, but I don't need to eat the whole pint. Because now when you look at your calories over the course of a whole year, the average is going to actually be in sync to where your weight should be. And you will lose weight. But if you actually diet and then binge, diet, 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 and then binge, Try to burn it off in the gym and then get an injury. You know, like go crazy with this whole imbalance. You actually end up gaining more weight or being more unhealthy. So what's what should you be doing? So if you calculate out your needs at your goal weight, that's, I'm going to make it up because I'm not on my phone. Let's say your goal weight is 150 pounds. 
okay? I, this is my client this morning, so I know this. A hundred and, who I recommended to you, her goal is 150 pounds, so I calculated out that her, and this is the, the, um, the formula that we use on patients in the hospital, or, you know, dietitians use. Her basal metabolic needs, that means how many calories she needs at rest doing nothing, being a couch potato all day, is 1,800 calories. So if she eats that, and a little bit more if she's active, or if she's really active, a whole lot more, like a lot more, like a real lot more, and divide it up throughout the day, and think my plate, healthy meals, you're gonna find you get to the end of the day, your body doesn't crave sweets and sugar. It's really amazing. My boyfriend, I don't think he eats enough this, the days, because he's like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm gaining weight. I'm like, first of all, if you know my boyfriend, he's so skinny, he's not gaining weight, he just thinks he is. And he's a runner, so it's like, you just need more pasta, more rice with that meal, have a bigger potato, have a second potato, have a third potato, but he doesn't. And then he eats the cookies and that ice cream. I shouldn't say this about him, but I got his permission. And he overeats the ice cream, but he, whenever I'm with him, he's eating the ice cream. And he's like, do you want a cone? And I'm like, I just want one tablespoon because it tastes good. But if I haven't eaten enough, I'm like, yeah, I want a cone, no more because I haven't eaten enough. When you give your body what it needs, spread out throughout the day and get active, you will find that your body gets just what it needs. And then it's not saying, I'm gonna hold on to all this, this fat because I think they're starving me. They're not giving me enough. Your body says, hey, I'm getting enough. Wow, I think I'm just gonna let some of this go. And then you start to lose weight. And when you're eating your complex carbs, you're like, whoa, where'd that heartburn go? I've had heartburn for decades, it's gone. Well, you're not bringing in all that ammonia, uric acid, urea, and all that extra stuff that sometimes, an extra fat that sometimes repeats and causes ill health. So when you eat more natural and a little bit, even at the Golden Door, they have the healthiest diet or menu you have ever seen. Everything is like this and calculated and highest of quality. It's absolutely amazing. Every time there's a break in between classes, there's fresh vegetables, uh, crudite, not with dips, just the vegetables. And we do potassium broth, which is pureed vegetables. And you can add in a little bit of uh, um, oatmeal flakes, or you can add in some chia seeds and some spice so that you get some other antioxidants, which again, variety, you have to just do that to get it, you're getting it. And they're eating so much food throughout the day, it what feels like so much food. And then at the end of lunch and dinner, we give them a little tiny dessert. We give everybody the dessert because that's the pleasure with the meal. And some people come in and say, I can't believe they serve dessert. They give us sugar, what's wrong with them? And I'm like, no, that's the balance. It's not a huge serving. It's a little taste to bring joy. It's okay. Finding a balance, eating all those vegetables, slow down the fiber, or the fiber slows down the sugar, the protein, the little bit of fat fills you up. They don't add oil to anything. They use, well, a little bit, but they use pureed vegetables and pureed um, beans to make cream sauces, not butter, not heavy cream or oils. They use pureed vegetables. And then if they need to brown it, they do it on the top. They take a torch or they'll put a little something on top and torch it, but there's no fat throughout the whole thing. So everyone's like, I'm eating so much and I'm so full and I can't stop peeing, sorry, and I'm losing weight. Well, it's healthy balance. And do you need to do this all the time? No, you still need to go out and enjoy your girlfriend time and find a balance because you don't want to look back on life and say, damn it, I wish that I had done that, but I was too busy counting calories or not eating and I missed out on all that fun. Find a balance, eat more vegetables. That's the takeaway. So here's the blood sugar. Here's what it's doing over one. It is normal for your blood sugar to fluctuate 30 to 50 milligrams per deciliter <coughs> throughout a meal. 
okay? And then throughout the day, that's supposed to do that. We just want to avoid the spikes, but now you know how to do that. Eat until you're comfortably full, not stuffed, because that's high sugar. Eat before you get too hungry, you make a bad decision, that's going to keep your blood sugar right in the range. So eating by listening to your cues. Wow. When we nurse our babies, does anyone else nurse? I nurse my babies. I had no idea what the baby was taking. Three and a half years. I can, good. I could tell you that I was on the phone with my mom saying, oh my God, this baby is sucking the life out of me. He's nursing all the time. I can't do this. And then the next week, the baby's eating. barely eating. Not Something's eating. wrong with it. Should I bring it to the doctor? No, that's intuitive eating. Mm -hmm. We're all born knowing exactly mm -hmm. what we need. When the baby goes through a growth spurt, it takes more. When it's not, it takes less. Some days we're more hungry and we eat more. That's okay. You know what's gonna happen the next day? You're probably gonna eat less. You're just not gonna be as hungry. Start listening to your cues and you're gonna get off that roller coaster and you're going to have a more even keel. Mm -hmm. I love it. I eat whole wheat, but when I go out to eat and I can't get it, I eat white. But I get a salad and vegetables with that. Okay, so listening to your cues, that first hang up hunger means something. Eat. So when you're like, oh, I brought you food, I'm like, oh, I ate before I came, I'm not that hungry. But I took a plate, I'm going to eat it as soon as I get that pain. Okay, sometimes I eat when I'm not hungry, but hey, that's emotional eating and that's another talk. Um, this is my favorite slide. This is showing you what 500 calories <coughs> looks like. Five, five. 500 okay. calories in carbohydrates on the far right, the two on the right. Those are your plant-based fruits, vegetables, grains, starchy vegetables, legumes, beans, and then fat on the far left. And it's showing you because fat has nine calories per gram, it has a lot more calories than carbohydrates, which only have four calories per gram. So your fat is way more caloric than your complex carbs. And the protein in the middle, it all depends. If you're eating cheese and nuts, well, nuts are good for you. Cheese, not so good, a little bit. If it's a high fat food, it's gonna be higher in calorie. If it's a non-fat cheese, I don't know if, can, if that's a thing, or um, a lean protein like chicken or seafood without butter and fried, then it's gonna be over all the way over to the right. So this leads into paleo. So I've talked about keto and now I'll talk about paleo. That's so popular right now. Eat like the caveman. It extends your life. Well, let's really talk about those cavemen. <laughs> they live to be 25 or something. Yeah, the average age is 31. <laughs> 31. So we know nothing about longevity. Okay, that's number one. Number two, they did not sit in front of a computer all day. They were out looking for food and they were climbing trees. They were running. They were getting chased. They were pulling stuff from the earth. They were killing animals and ripping them apart. They were doing all kinds of stuff. And then they carried it all home, okay? They did not go into their little caveman uh, refrigerator. Oh, caves. What, what kind of caves? They're man caves. Man caves. Open up their man cave refrigerator and pull out some ketchup or sour cream or salad dressing or olive oil or anything. They ate it raw. Raw. That's New York. Raw. They <laughs> ate it and they ate a ton of food. It just didn't amount to as many calories. It was not a keto beef jerky with grass-fed beef, but if you actually look at the, the um, label, it's so high in salt, it's almost deadly. And it's so high in fat, it's basically the grass-fed fat from the animal. It's not the meat even, and they're labeling it as organic grass-fed and good for you. Start.
ourselves. So he did this for years and years and years. He made tons of money. He's actually good friends with a lot of people that come to the Golden Door because I'll start telling this story. Oh, he's my neighbor. Oh, our kids grew up together. Oh, he will. I'll tell you at the end what he does. Um, <laughs> so he's decides, I want to prove this. I'm going to conduct the biggest study that we have to date to prove that this is the best way to eat. And he did. He actually conducted, and to make a valid study, it has to be a long period of time and a lot of people. And he did, and the results came in on April 21st, 2022, this past year. And to his surprise, because he did not believe it, because we all thought it would be skewed because he paid for this study and it would prove it. He's like, it doesn't. It's another form of dieting. When you put limits on when you can eat and you don't eat during those large periods of time, you're taking in less calories. And guess what? You lose weight. And when you lose weight, you lower all your lab values and your cholesterol and your blood pressure. And then guess what? You live longer. So that's what it has proved. And he eats breakfast now. He does not time restrict. Please excuse me. I have yeah, to go we're teach, just about but, done. But Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. <laughs> Thank you for inviting Thank you. me. Okay, I see. so that's the Shana end of the presentation. Shana Shana to all of you. I'll be in touch. Okay, great. Bye, thanks. So that's the end, actually. Huh? Intermittent fasting doesn't work. Find a balance between what your body wants, what your body needs. Find that balance, spread it out throughout the day, and listen to your cues. You didn't debunk um, my book. Oh, yeah. The okay. Goddess. Well, it's disordered eating. If you take your sandwich apart, I told you this already, and you eat the veggies first, but will that work? Yeah, it works. Can you do that for the rest of your life? Do you want to do that for the rest of your life? No. That but it's scientifically proven that scientifically to put the greens in first? That vegetables will slow down how fast the sugar goes into your bloodstream. But... Is it going to make that much of a difference in your overall blood glucose level that you need to eat disorderly? Mm, it's not going to make that much of a difference. Include more vegetables. Eat it together as a sandwich. It's okay. Be aware of... So if I get a, one so of those... Gonna, let me just say something. If you are like, I want to get my blood sugar down, and you do all this stuff for three months, then it's down, but it'll come right back up as soon as you stop. So you got to look at what you can do. For the rest of your life, that will keep your blood Okay, so if I eat, if I go to Starbucks and I get one of those um, breakfast, the white feta cheese thing, and I get a chai tea latte, is it really best to wait and eat two bites of the food before sipping the latte? I mean, does it matter? What's, what's in the latte? It's going to have the milk and the sugar, right? The Can sugar in the chai tea. Sugar? Just do no, one I still am having the latte. It's okay. just whether or not by putting the food in first, does okay, that make a difference? We're going to give you a, a blood glucose monitor, and you're going to see. You can actually buy them at uh, Costco right now. Really? They're below cost. How much? They're like $60. We'll all split it. No, you can't all share it. Yeah. you got to put it on oh, your own. Oh, it's a monitor. Yeah, oh, that oh, goes oh. on into your interstitial fluid. Okay, I will. Or you can, you can just buy a... Costco? Yeah. You can buy a continuous glucose monitor mm -hmm. without a prescription? Okay. Yep. Yep.